So welcome to our midship model. Here we are sitting in a piece that's been built specifically for our experimental archaeology. It's a test piece. If you can imagine the full length of the ship, we're in the very central section of that, which was known as the burial chamber when it was uh, Queen Gregory was buried in it. We've built this in order to think about the inside of the ship. When the ship was discovered, we were able to see the hull shape, but we weren't able to extract any information about what went inside. So we are literally playing with the different heights of things, we're playing you know, with the, the positioning of things in order to find out where our rowers would have sat, how they would have operated this ship, um, and, and how it would have manoeuvred through the water. So I'm sitting on a makeshift float. This is a seat. This is a, an all blank, so it's not completed. It's something that's approximately the right weight, approximately the right length. So let's take, take a, a closer look at the rowing motion. In a modern day rowing skull, the oar pivots against an enclosed gate, so the oar never pops out of place. With a tender, the sort of small rowing boat that you use perhaps to get out to a yacht or a sailing dinghy, the, the boat will have a, a row lock, which is a, a, a U-shape um, that the oar sits in it and generally stays in place while it pivots back and forwards. What we found with um, the experiment, experimental archaeology on this is that it has these thong pins um, or thong gates. So these wave-shaped things would be used for the oar to rest against in order to pivot so that the oars would have plenty of, of leverage and leverage it through the water. Now we believe, although we have no proof, that these would have been somehow tethered with some kind of rope made from local materials which would have attached to the ship here and again to the hole pin here. So the oarsmen wouldn't have been um, too worried that they'd have lost their oar. Um, it would have more or less held in, in place. But, you know, we're experimenting with different shapes of these because as you can see, at the moment this oar will not naturally sit in the curvature here. My belief is this should be more upright in order to give that leverage point. Um, so we will continue to mock up different designs based on the plans that we have until we're happy that we can both row this sensibly and have something that's as close to the original plan as possible. Okay, so would you like to actually be part of this historic project? What we're offering people is an opportunity to sponsor one of the ship's rivets. So they're demonstrated here in this model. There will be over three and a half thousand rivets in this ship and you could have your name against one of those for a mere 20 pounds, but then you would be part of the legacy of this ship. We would carry your name on our website. When your rivet was put into the ship, we would let you know so you'd be able to um, perhaps come and visit and see where your rivet was. We also send you a certificate and you get a nice neat little sponsor's pin like this one um, and also it helps us fund this, this project so that we can see it right through to the end. So go to our website which is www.saxonship.org and you'll see everything on there that you need to know in order to go online and sponsor a rivet. Thank you.